Welcome to the first episode of It's Your Limp. I am so glad you're here. Thank you for listening. The reason why I want to do this podcast now is because I've waited 30 years for the lymphatic system to have its golden moment in wellness. And it's finally here. I wrote a book. I'm sure many of you heard about it. It's called The Book of Lymph. And what has motivated me to speak to you today is I am so excited to share with you the recipes that have helped thousands of people learn how to feel better in their bodies. I don't know if you're like me, if you're somebody who has struggled with weight or you've struggled with acne or sleep or digestion, or you're somebody who gets colds a lot or you're inflamed a lot. But what I have found in my life is that working with the lymphatic system really is the missing ingredient to reducing inflammation in the body, to feeling more vibrant, more energy and less brain fog. Listen, you may have gone to a million doctors and they've told you you're fine, everything's fine, but you don't feel great. You're feeling sluggish, you're feeling tired, or you wish you had more energy. This is what I found. As a lymphatic drainage therapist, I've worked with thousands of people over the past couple decades. I've worked with people who've had cancer, lupus, Lyme, inflammation, digestive issues, sleep issues, eczema. Those people have gone to nutritionists, physicians, endocrinologists, and something has been missing. Most people don't realize you need to engage your lymphatic system on your own. When I say working with your lymphatic system, what I mean is physical touch. Doing lymphatic self-massage can help reduce your menstrual cramps, it can help you with perimenopause. But what I love about it the most is it's part of your immune system. It's the highway of your immune system. Doing lymphatic self-massage can help alleviate the symptoms that might be plaguing you and interfering with you living the vibrant life you want to live. This podcast is a space for me to share a little bit about who I am and what drove me to working with people and their lymph systems. My story really began in the 70s when my parents sat my brother and I down on the yellow and brown plaid couch and told us our mother had cancer. I didn't know anybody who had cancer. It wasn't as common as it is today. And we didn't know anyone who survived cancer in those days. My mom was a very private person, so she didn't tell many people that she had cancer. We were really close. And we had a really loving relationship, but she didn't share everything that was going on with us. She did chemo, she did radiation, she did Western treatment, followed what the doctors told her to do, and tried to spare me and my brother with some of her internal struggles. This part of our family definitely changed the dynamic. We went from being a social family who used to have parties and people over to not inviting as many people over anymore, not having as much joy in the house. I would still cut the gardenias and place the flowers on the table for dinner, but the energy definitely changed in the house. So my mom was in and out of hospitals for a couple years. My mom had what I assumed were good doctors, but I knew things were getting worse when our family took a trip to Dallas, Texas and flew out to MD Anderson. They had us meet with the oncologists, the specialists at that cancer hospital. I don't even think there was a parent in the room, but I remember the doctor asked us if we had any questions about our mom's diagnosis. And I said, will this take years off my mom's life? And the doctor looked at me directly in the eye and he goes, yes, this will shave some years off your mom's life. I didn't know my mom would pass away a year later. I just imagined she would pass away in her late 80s instead of her 90s. Anyways, in between my mother's doctor's appointments and the progression of her lung cancer to a brain tumor and brain cancer and brain surgery, we had a family friend who was a meditation teacher. He taught us as a family the Silva method of meditation. And we'd all go over to the house and we'd lie on the floor and we'd learn how to meditate and go down into the alpha and beta levels 
where healing occurs. And we'd learn creative visualization. We'd lie with our mom. She'd play meditation music of lily pads and streams and waterfalls. And I'd go to level and I'd go inside of her body and imagine the cancer cells leaving and fill them with immune cells. Also, my dad, if one of us had a headache, my father would lay his hand, his big old palm on her forehead and help energetically move the headache out of our body. I know this sounds like definitely a little woo-woo, especially in the 70s, but we were the family who tried everything. My mother also heard about a book that a hitchhiker wrote, how she cured herself from cancer through a macrobiotic diet. So my mom marched us to the health food store on Ventura Boulevard. You know, the one that was in the Valley Girl. If you know, you know. And we replaced chocolate with carob and dairy with kefir and probiotics. And what I realized later is that was a time where I was absorbing the different modalities of healing through health food, through meditation, through touch, through sensitivity, in addition to the Western medical model. My mom passed away on Christmas Eve. She was in the hospital and fortunately, I visited her before I left on a trip with friends to Palm Springs and she was lying in the hospital bed and she had tubes in her nose, which is different from how she usually is. And there was this inner voice in my body that said, go back into that room and kiss your mother one last time. And thankfully I did, because that was the last time I saw my mom. Now, as a 13-year-old girl, that profound loss obviously shaped me. It was not freaking easy. I don't recommend losing a parent that early in life. At any early in life is what I learned. But what that deep, profound loss did is lead me to exploring what is the meaning of life and how can I live a life well lived now, which is kind of a heavy concept for a 13 year old. But okay, I definitely rebelled and I definitely participated in things that weren't healthy at that age. But in high school, I also learned about Buddhism and Hinduism, and existentialism. And I read everything I could get my hands on at the Bodhi Tree bookstore. If any of you remember the Bodhi Tree in LA, it was the spiritual bookstore. I gobbled up Shirley MacLaine's Out on a Limb. I learned about reincarnation. And what I wanted to understand is how can I live well now? So fast forward to college where I studied cultural anthropology and was really interested in the way cultures heal. At that time, this was the 80s, acupuncture was seen as woo-woo. It wasn't accepted in the Western medical model. And I love to explore how different cultures heal. But as a Jewish white identifying woman, I didn't want to go into another culture and tell them how they lived. So I went into the healing arts after college and I went to massage school. I was living in San Francisco at the time and the massage school I attended was in Marin County's We practiced sometimes outdoors underneath the redwood trees and nature. And that's where I discovered the lymphatic system. I fell in love with the undulating rhythms of the lymph strokes. When I would lie on the table, what what I found was this profound feeling of no more trauma in my body. What I felt in my body when I received lymphatic massage was I was at home in my body again back like before I was 13 years old. The more I studied lymphatic massage, the more benefits I reaped. My digestion got better, my menstrual cramps improved, the acne that plagued me from childhood where I took Accutane and antibiotics cleared my skin. I also was inspired to drink more water, live a healthy life, eat a healthy diet, exercise more, And the deeper I went learning about the lymphatic system, the more I understood that lymphatic massage is an immune boosting massage. So many of my colleagues were obsessed with like deep tissue massage and neuromuscular reprogramming and structural integration. But what I found was the lymphatic system. I loved learning the physiology of lymph, how this biological system helps filter out the waste in our body. I'll never forget, I took an intermediate course for my teacher 
And one day we're sitting on the rug, watching the slideshow about the science of the limp. And she said, if you like this work, you can go on and get certified because this work is beneficial for cancer patients. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. I guess this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. I studied the lymphatic system in massage school for five years. I was supporting myself doing computer work. And I also became obsessed with travel. Anytime I had free time, I was traveling. I was in Europe, I was in the Middle East, I went to Bali for a month, I was in Egypt, I was in Turkey, I was in Israel. I traveled everywhere. And in 1998, I took a year off to travel through India, Nepal, and Thailand. I went to Ayurvedic doctors, I went to Balinese masters. I was learning all the different modalities that people have been practicing for traditions for thousands of years. But what I kept coming back to was the lymphatic system. So after a year, I moved back to Los Angeles because UCLA was hiring for lymphedema therapists. So I started working at UCLA Medical Center with cancer patients who had lymphedema, which is the excess accumulation of the protein-rich lymph fluid made up of waste that can occur if somebody has had lymph nodes removed through cancer surgery or radiation or chemotherapy. What I found working with cancer patients was not only were we reducing the inflammation in their body, but the skin tone from the ash gray color, one of the side effects of chemotherapy, would turn to a rosy complexion again. Their digestion would improve. The neuropathy from their fingers and toes would improve. That metal taste in their mouth would go away. So 20 years ago, I started working in private practice and I would work with people early, right at diagnosis, to see can we mitigate some of the effects of cancer treatment and mitigate the potential for lymphedema. Now, listen, it's hard to understand now because we see so much lymph in social media, but what I wanna take you back to 20, 25 years ago, there weren't a lot of people working with the lymphatic system. And if you were working with the immune system, insurance was covering it, but only once somebody got lymphedema. People weren't working early, but I decided we have to work early. If we're having so much positive benefits, let's work early. So. I remember some of my colleagues thinking I was nuts working early, but I didn't care because what I saw was helping people with the side effects. Pretty soon my name began to spread with word of mouth and I was getting people coming with autoimmune issues, gut issues, health issues, and we were seeing that doing lymphatic drainage would help so many areas of their life. So what I developed about 15 to 20 years ago was how can we help people take care of their lymphatic system in between appointments? So I developed a series of lymphatic self-massage to keep people's lymph system moving because your lymph system doesn't have a central pump to move it the way the heart pumps the blood. You need the muscle skeletal movements to help propel lymph through your body. What I found was astonishing. In between appointments, people were telling me that their inflammation was down, their symptoms were improved. I kept thinking about my mom when I was working I wish she had access to these tools so that she could feel healthy in between her treatments. And this is what fuels me. My mom's journey led me to where I am today. And it's led me to help people feel better. And that's what I want you all to get during these episodes and during this podcast is little nuggets that might just help you unlock the ingredient that you've been missing to help you feel better from the inside out. One of the things my lymphatic massage teacher taught us is Qigong. She taught us the rhythm and the flow of moving the lymph is like the way seaweed undulates in the water. So this work is just like being in a rhythm and a flow so that you imagine all the rivers of your body are naturally cleansing you from the inside out. It's with this spirit of feeling the rhythms of the waters of the body, feeling my mom's journey is what drives me to give you this information so that you can start using lymphatic self-massage in your life to improve any area that might be bothering you. The studies are there that show Manual lymphatic drainage can benefit people with fibromyalgia, cancer patients, and it's the most beneficial treatment after an athletic injury. Those studies show us that touch for health can help downregulate the nervous system just like the lymphatic system does. 
And when we place our hands on ourselves, not only is it free, you have the tools to help your body heal. Touch is used in almost every culture. We're just not used to doing it ourselves. In this podcast, we're gonna be speaking with gastroenterologists, neurologists, nutritionists, estheticians, so that you understand how your lymphatic system interacts with every system of your body and give you some actionable tools and tips to take the power of healing into your own hands with touch. I want to empower as many of you as I possibly can to use your own hands to heal. Whether you listen to your podcast while you're walking down the street or you're in your car or you're cooking or cleaning your house, what I want you to visualize is the inner rivers of your body that is your lymph that is constantly clearing and cleaning and nourishing you. I want you to imagine your lymph vessels and the lymph capillaries and the lymph nodes like roots of a tree and the stems of the flower and the stars in the sky providing you with waterfalls of health. I can't emphasize enough how doing self-massage can benefit your health. I do it all the time. I do lymphatic self-massage in the car. If you've been out to dinner with me, I'm usually massaging my neck at dinner parties after a glass of wine. If you've seen me at a concert, I'm often massaging my armpits. <laughs> my goal is to see people walking down Madison Avenue in New York massaging their lymph. My goal is to see people on trains in Europe massaging their lymph. You can do it anywhere, anytime, it's free and you don't need to rely on anyone else to feel better. It's never too early or too late to learn about your lymphatic system. That's why I'm coming to you every week with a new little morsel about what you can do to engage your lymph system and learn how to love your lymph for everything it's got to give you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're inspired to share this with a friend and I cannot wait for you to hear the episode next week. That's it for me for today. Take care and may you be in good lymphatic health always.